our greatest joys in growing our own food is growing rare, open-pollinated heirloom varieties that you'd probably never see in a grocery store. This is not only fun and personally rewarding, but we're also doing our small part to maintain food biodiversity. Over the past several decades, partly as a result of the Green Revolution, farmers have been planting fewer varieties of crops and have instead focused on crops that produce the highest yields, ship and store well, and please fickle consumers who demand perfect-looking produce. Currently, as a result of this decades-long trend, only 12 plant species provide 75% of our total food supply. According to the July 2011 National Geographic article, Food Arc, by Charles Siebert, an estimated 90% of the historic fruit and vegetable varieties in the United States have vanished. Of the 7,000 apple varieties that were grown in the 1800s, fewer than 100 remain. In the Philippines, thousands of varieties of rice once thrived. Now only up to 100 are grown there. And in China, 90% of the wheat varieties cultivated just a century ago have disappeared. But why should we care? For me, just on a personal level, it feels like such a shameful waste to lose this wonderful diversity of plant life. But there's a lot more to it than that. The monocultures that remain are more susceptible to pests, disease, and bad weather. When huge acreages of farmland are planted with plants that all respond to stressors in exactly the same way, and there's a pest infestation, a harmful fungus, or bad weather, the entire crop could be lost leading to potentially devastating food shortages. The Irish potato famine is a good historical example of how relying on a single genetic strain of a single crop, the lumper potato, can lead to devastating results. More recently, the UG99 fungus outbreak in Africa and its devastation of the wheat crop there teaches a similar lesson. As Charles Siebert put it, if a plant disease wipes out one of the handful of plants we rely on to feed our growing planet, we might desperately need one of those varieties we've let go extinct. Genetic diversity in crops reduces the risk of crop failure because genetically diverse plants respond to stressors differently, whether they're pests, diseases, or bad weather. While one strain of wheat may be susceptible to a fungus, another may be less so. So having a broad diversity of food crops helps ensure food security for everybody. So when we order our open-pollinated heirloom seeds from rareseeds.com or southernexposure.com, we're glad to support a seed company that is working diligently to preserve food biodiversity, and we feel like we're doing our small part as well. In the future, I'd like to do more to preserve food biodiversity. One thing I'd like to do is save and share more seeds, and this channel might be an excellent avenue to pursue that goal. First, though, I'll have to start doing a much better job of properly saving and storing seeds, but all of that can be worked out. YouTube is also a great forum for sharing information and ideas. If you'd like, please share your favorite source for seeds in the comments below, as well as any other thoughts you may have on growing heirloom vegetables, saving seeds, and sharing seeds. If enough of us support seed companies that sell open pollinated heirlooms, and enough of us save and share seeds, we can have an impact on preserving food biodiversity. And we can change the world one yard at a time. Thank you very much for watching.